Hello, welcome to the Youth Roundtable. I'm Gan Tian, your host for this live discussion. And today, our guests are the scholars who are studying China from different parts of the world. And also, we have a, a young professional who has decided to pursue her career in China after graduating here. So we will be discussing campus life, social trends, and future aspirations. So let's get this conversation going. First, I would like to do um, some basic introductions to our um, guest today. Natalia, would you mind to go first? Absolutely, no problem. Uh, well, I'm Natalia Mendez. I'm from Chile, so I'm also a Charisma Scholar. And mainly, I've been working since I graduated in higher education, universities, the University of Santiago, uh, doing research about the public sector, about education, then moving to international affairs. And for the last year, I worked in the Xinhua Latin America Center. And a fun fact about me is that I really like Latin American dancing, so I'm looking forward to meeting other Latin Americans in Beijing and hopefully meet each other and practice, I guess. Please be sure to bring it with, if you do, do go to these events, bring it with me. So, yeah, yeah bring absolutely, us with you. absolutely. Bring all of us with you. Yes, we let's all the entire group chat. Yeah, the entire cohort. Let's mm -hmm. go together. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, Omid, introduce yourself. Hello and good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Um, yeah, so my name is Omid. Uh, the term is too complex, so I will skip it. But I'm from Italy, Florence, and the central part of Italy, but also have roots in uh, Persian um, Persian culture. I love to talk about my mission in general. I, I think I, I love the intersection of social entrepreneurship and public policy, especially to unleash the power of young people. My former education has been basically around Italy and Poland, the US in economics and management. I'm a Schwarzman scholar right now um, at Tsinghua University, so mostly to, uh, um, discussing topics on global affairs and uh, future trends as uh, global leaders. Great, great, great. Thank you so much for our Zoom friends. Now let's get back to the studio. Okay, so Wenjun, introduce yourself. Okay, nice to meet you. My name is Zhang Wenjun, and also currently studying at the Tsinghua University, the college, uh, Swaziland College. So before the five, past the five years, I studied at, uh, and worked at South Korea. So from my personal experiences, I'm interested in the NGO and the work with the inter incubators. So I want to share with more my personal experiences in NGO and uh, robotics. So uh, one of the fun fact about me is uh, before I speak Korean, I learned to Korean. Actually, I uh, learned, learned uh, Japanese before, yeah. So you can speak both Japanese and Korean. Yeah, Very good. Yeah. So rank them like your English ability, chi um, not Chinese, English ability, Korean, and then Japanese. Which one is the best? Yeah, actually, definitely my Chinese is my mother tongue. And uh, uh -huh. I second is Korean. And second, uh, third is English. And last is Japanese. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, Emma. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is Emma. I, um, well, fun fact, I am the one that's not a student. <laughs> I am currently um, an editor here at CGTN. Um, I graduated in 2020 from a master's program, and then I took a gap year. I took a gap year, and I went to work for a Korean company. And after that, this year, I finally came back to Beijing. I'm really excited to be back and to be here. Uh, and I also did my master's at Tsinghua University. So I'm very excited for you guys, um, Ome, Natalia, and Wenjun, to be starting their semester at Tsinghua. Okay, okay, okay. So um, as you guys are um, begin the, your new campus life, and then how do you feel about it? Like nervous or excited? Tell us about it. Yeah. Which Yes, yes. Andrew. Yeah, I think it is for me, it's both excited and nervous. For exciting part is, I think it is as a, a new students to Tsinghua University, we have to find our future uh, planning, we have to uh, learn how to uh, find our future way, and also to meet new friends from overseas, especially in Swaziland College. There's many, many the international students. As a Chinese scholars, we have the responsibility where we have the, uh, I think for me, is uh, I have the responsibility to uh, take care of the, the international students and uh, uh, let them know more about the chi chi Chinese culture and the Chinese language. And uh, I think it is very interesting. And the second is about the nervous part. I think nervous part is for me uh, because I want to find the, uh, my future way. 
uh, to uh -huh. continue study or to find a job. Uh, but for me, I think it is not an easy way to make a decision to uh, how to find your way to find a good job for you or make a higher salary. So I think it is uh, uh, the personal issue for me for now. Yeah. Oh, so you were trying to use that year to find out yeah. all that question. Yeah, exactly. I get why you're nervous now. Okay, yeah. so Natalia, are you nervous or excited? Which one? Or Actually, mixed? I was more nervous be before I came to China. The first day, like arriving here, felt a little overwhelming. Everything was too different. But at the same time, like right after that, getting to meet all of my classmates, I've been feeling so comfortable and so happy and just so confident. So it's, I feel so familiar, even though everything is in another language. I, I, I really feel like I just want to explore and, and I, every day I feel like I belong somehow. I think there's like a lot of work uh, done there from part of the college. I feel Tsinghua is really trying to make us feel good. But as for me, I just want to challenge myself a little every day and try a new thing. So I guess I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, um, building upon that, do you have like a Chinese bucket list that you wish to check off? Mm, a bucket list? Yes. As for me? Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> Mainly I want to, uh, I always wanted to learn how to play mahjong. So oh. I've been trying to practice a little. Also, I guess like traveling as much as I can. I want to go to the stone pillars, also to Red Beach. Sorry if I don't know how to say that uh, with the proper Chinese words but I'm trying, I want to learn and better in my, my Chinese skills because I have too many Chinese friends that I want to talk to uh, more fluently also because of my uh, work colleges. And I guess that I also would like to try some kind of event, I don't know, but to try on uh, traditional Chinese clothing, I think that will be very precious and very beautiful, culturally significant. And of course, just try the modern life, eat all the foods, try on the clothes. That will be very exciting for me. Okay, how about you, Omid? Are you nervous or excited? I, I'm, I think I'm both. We have a big common ground with, uh, with um, all the participants, but I, I'm, I'm both excited and, and anxious, let's say, but um, I'm feeling super energetic right now. Um, and I find inspiration in meeting people every day and exploring the beautiful green campus here. Mm -hmm. And I love actually the biking and the food culture here. Um, and, and I think that's that's also relates to my fun fact. That I really love to go biking in, in the rural areas to uh, ask old people, uh, what's your story? And, and just sit there all day and listen about them. I think I can apply it here in many different ways to learn about local culture and local people. And I feel at home because we have been building a big community here and a lot of community work starts from the roots of personal values. And I think we have done a lot of community building. I think I, I, I uh, I will be only excited from from few days uh, from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I I think there are a lot of Chinese communities um, in back in Ital Italy, right? And then like the interaction, like I'm very curious about like the interaction between the Italian community and the Chinese community back to uh, back in your hometown. So would you mind like a little bit like elaborate on that? Definitely, definitely. Um, and, and that's also one reason why I wanted to study in China. It was the first reason uh, out of three is that in, in close by my city, we have one of the highest density of Chinese community in whole Europe, uh, just because in proportion of the, of the city I, I live in, it's, it's, uh, it's much higher. Um, and I've been living in a place where in my world where I live, I think out of eight um, shops, um, out of 10 shops, eight of them are, are owned by Chinese people. And we speak more uh, Chinese than Italian in my own street where I live. So I, I, I got used to it and I, I got curious about it as well because it seems very close because it's next door. But at the same time, you have a whole culture which is miles away and kilometers away that uh, I, I, most of people are, 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 are want to learn about. So um, the, 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 both community have been working together, but at the same time, the, the, the sort of a polarization over years that didn't allow for a deep understanding between dif different cultures. And that's why mm -hmm. I, um, I, uh, what I'm trying to do here is, is do, trying to understand how to, culture bre uh, cu how to bridge cultures through mutual understanding and how I can bring it back to my city in Tuscany and understand how we can work together better for, for our own community and, and, uh, and social development. 
Wow, that's 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 really that's I've learned a lot. That's very insightful, and I'm happy to learn more about that. Okay, I will get back to Emma now. So what, oh. what, <laughs> what, what is on your China's bucket list? Uh, my China bucket list. Uh, well, what do you think my China bucket list con consists of, Gan Tian? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Well, we can bring this conversation later. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you don't want to disclose. No, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. okay, okay. I'm not okay. sharing it today. Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, um, you, you, are you sure that you don't want to share it right now? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so let's shift the gears and then talk more about the future. So, um, do you, okay, so again, I wanted to ask you, Emma, right mm. now, you are the only one except me that have like a full time job right now. So, <laughs> would you mind to share a little bit about your personal experience, like your prof okay. professional experience? Sure, sure. Sure. I think I think it was really interesting listening to Omid and Natalia talk about you know coming to China for for the first time kind of and living here because when I first got here, I had actually a lot of like culture shocks. I had a lot of culture shocks, and my first month I thought I am leaving as soon as I graduate. I cannot adapt to this. But look where I am now. You know, I'm really happy um, to you know to be doing what I'm doing right now and to be here right now. Um, so, well, how did my education affect my career right now? I think if I didn't come to study in China, I wouldn't have, you know, decided to pursue my career here in the first place. Um, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I did philosophy and I did it in the UK. So it was a lot about Western philosophy and I thought that was Mm, a very one-sided view of the world and I came to China because I wanted to understand more. I wanted to expand my worldview. And I thought if I finished my undergraduate degree and came to China, found a job, that would be too much of a shock to my system because it's vastly, vastly different. Um, and that's what I experienced when I came to study here. I thought the experience was going to be easier if I came to study. Uh, even though I can read Chinese, uh, I probably didn't you know, speak Chinese very well then. Mm -hmm. I could read, I could understand. It was still difficult for me to kind of um, assimilate or like adjust. Uh, but also similar to what Omen and Talia were saying, I had very good friends. I met really amazing people who helped me um, really kind of enjoy my life here. And I came to realize, you know, this is actually a different way of living that I prefer and I want at least in the short to medium term right now, at this point in my career, that's what I want. So I think studying in China expanded um, my view of what's possible mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah. That's, that's really good. And also, um, Wen Jun, yeah. so what, what, what about you? Like, how do you see like going back to studying China again? Because you did your undergrads here. Yeah. Uh, what will fit into your long-term goal? Yeah, I think it's a very interesting story for me. Because in the past five years, I mm. uh, live and uh, studied in South Korea. So, and in the three of five years, uh, three of five years, uh, because of COVID-19, so I cannot uh, commu mm -hmm. commute from the South Korea to China very frequently. So, uh, I just missed the home at South Korea. And so, in South Korea, at my, ho at my home, I rent a house in near my uh, near my school. So, I just uh, finish my everyday study. I uh, went back to home. I called called a video call to my parents. Mm -hmm. that I, I miss my home. So, but I cannot uh, go home. So in that day, I, I just uh, have the thinking: if uh, China opened the, open the doors to the overseas, the Chinese. So when I go back to China, I will rethink and re-understand China again, and also travel to many places like in, Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, Tibet. So many places I can go. So uh, I applied the Swaziman. One of the reasons is uh, I when I go back to China in that when I was in, in Korea in that day, I just uh, when I uh, go back to China, I want to travel many places to replay and also rethinking uh, how about China. Yeah, this is the thinking about about me. And the uh, second reason is in Swaziland College, I can meet so many the international students. For me, uh, interestingly about the 
uh, NGO. So many Swazma College, the scholars, they are doing the work related to the NGO and the startups. So I can meet the uh, talents from overseas. Yeah, I think it is very, it is very uh, interesting and also meaningful journey for me. Yeah. Of course. Okay, let's get back to our Zoom friends. So how about you guys? Like, how do you see that your experience at Tsinghua will really enhance like your um, long-term goal? Yeah. You want to go first, Omid? Sure. Um, um, you guys can decide. Yeah, Natalia, you can go first. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So about like long-term plans. Um, well, uh, mainly because I worked at the Tsinghua Latin America Center, I feel like I experienced the cultural shock before. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like lucky enough to be welcomed into a very tight community, get to understand the cultural compatibilities and sort of be like, walk through um, my whole journey to China because it's an it's a higher education institution. So I got to meet a lot of professors uh, from Latin America, also from other regions, and also professors from China and Tsinghua who are doing amazing things from fields that I didn't know about. Uh, engineering, AI, innovation in um, different types of technologies and how that can have a social impact. So as someone with a background in public administration and studies from the public sector, I sort of envisioned China as this one um, uh, country that is doing things differently and that is having a focus on the innovation. Also, there's a booming relationship in, with, with, in Latin America and Chinese companies that I really want to study and also uh, be one of the um, younger people who study this kind of phenomenon. So as for my future, I feel like it all connects. I think um, this scholarship is very prestigious. It's a huge opportunity to, for example, I've been thinking creating my own organizations based on all of the research that I've done and all of these connections that you create because um, education, especially when international, really connects uh, with governments, with the way the nation ambitions how things need to be done. So for me, that is really meaningful. And I guess I want to write, I want to make papers and publications about China and I have to study. Maybe I will study longer. I keep my options very open, but I definitely want to become a professional with a focus in Asian and China studies. So maybe maybe in the future also i will also like to maybe come back to chile with all of this knowledge and implement some innovative solutions for the public sector and especially get involved uh, with education so one day maybe in the uh in the ministry of education i would like that to have as a long-term goal yeah i hope you're watching this right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hope they are watching and also yeah that's that's wonderful. I'm so inspired by your insights and then by your sharing. And uh, maybe you can pass the torch to Omid right now. Yeah, tell us Absolutely. about how... Absolutely, go ahead. That's well. Wonderful. Well, um, I can answer it also from a simple point of view for now. Uh, I couldn't, if I wouldn't be here, I couldn't meet uh, people like Wenjun that took so many languages and has uh, projects on NGOs and social innovation and also people like Natalia. Um, that uh, once works in education and a lot in policy. I mean, I think the core of, of this experience is a lot of uh, people because that's what probably the, the knowledge can can be, can stay and leave sometimes, but people will be staying there and the same shared experience can shape us and can also make us collaborate in different projects. But to a macro perspective, I think um, in the same way, the next door, my home, it's basically a totally different culture and, 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 and it's there since many years. I feel the extreme need to be fluent in, in China. And that means be fluent in the cultural norms, be fluent in understanding the, the perspectives of the world, understanding the, the viewpoints and, and also the business practices. Because at this point they're next to your door, but also if they wouldn't be next to your door there will be so many opportunities, but especially for my case, I, I, there's a huge, huge needs, immediate needs to learn about um, uh, about Chinese culture in China in general. So that's a definitely long-term plan because 
um, it, in any perspective, and even though you don't work necessarily in Asia, you, you, you deal very likely uh, with the Chinese culture or, or, or business as well. And, and from a personal point of view, um, in terms of my career goals, I, I feel like social innovation uh, has been uh, a very uh, important and, and huge market here in, in, in China. And I love to learn about the poverty alleviation um, results and, and problems as well, and try to apply it also not elsewhere in European Union or somewhere else as well. I think there are so many practices to learn about and also uh, to get inspiration from, for sure. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. I just really like how diverse and stimulating our roundtable is today. And I think there is in China or globally, there is like a growing sentiment among Gen Z, like our age group, that the idea, like we're trying to challenge this idea that a step pass or a linear progression in life. We wanted to take, for example, a break to discover ourselves and wanted to return to school or switch careers even. So there is like a huge desire to explore beyond. So what do you guys think? Like, do you, um, do you think this will, um, by exploring more different possibilities or paths, do you think that will make your direction more clear? Or do you think that will actually make you more uncertain or even more confusing? So, um, yeah, yes, Natalia, yes. Yeah, do you mind if I go first? Yes, okay. yes, yes, um, yes. Okay, so I think like uh, from these two options, which is a set path versus more spontaneous kind of like exploring perspective, um, for the first one, I feel it gives a feeling of security and that I deeply respect because it can be a very important. For example, in Chile and other Latin American countries, um, sometimes there's not enough opportunities. There's a problem with social mobility, with inequality and other things. So uh, having a set path can give people a sense of security and structure that can really improve people's lives. And I think it's important to understand that. But also, I think that it's more important to also be strategic when making a plan. And that includes some flexibility and also creativity and identifying when you have to take a risk to move forward. So I think staying flexible is very important, especially when you want to um, encourage leadership. Uh, so I think both are viable. But especially, I wanted to talk about the second one in the sense that uh, youth are the future, and I feel like each generation has new ideas, new visions, and it's part also of the responsibility of the new generation, Gen Z, to imagine new and different ways of doing things that may be different from for what uh, we always did in the past. So I think it's actually a contribution to move forward to a different future and have fulfilling careers, and we have to support them, because sometimes being spontaneous it's also a better way to have significance in the things that you do. And in the end, I think that is what's really important whenever you're doing something in your career or in your life. Cool. Um, yes, I yeah, think it's really, yeah, please. <laughs> no, 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 I think, I think, I think, you know, I think Natalia raised a really good point, right? Having options or having choices is a privilege. We have to realize that we are very blessed to be able to, you know, do things like take a break or go back to school. Cause you know, some people don't get to do that and that's completely fine. You know, we do, we, we are accountable for ourselves and also we might have other responsibilities. Um, you know, some cultures take, you know, family responsibilities more seriously or, you know, um, all of that. So in anything that we do, you know, we need to respect what other people are doing and we shouldn't be imposing, you know, our own beliefs onto others. Yeah. So I think Natalia raised a really good point. Yeah, exactly. So for me, I think it is uh, like I mentioned it before. So when I was in Korea, I just thinking about, uh, so we have to have a time to think about your life. So that life will be your must. I think it is, it will be your gap year. Yeah. So some of my friends near me, they are thinking about the, should they have the gap year? Is the gap year is necessary for them? So my, for my personal opinion, I think it's necessary. So the gap year for you, you can think about uh, what's your future life. And I think it is that everything changes very fast. Mm -hmm. So you have to take your time to think about what you, what you want to do. So uh, you have to think about your future life and you can meet your friends 
and to share your different opinions with others. So that is why we as a use to make the platform to get together to share our opinions. So from others' opinions, we can learn uh, that is the other person's experiences, but what we can do uh, from your uh, perspective. So I think it is very meaningful for us to have the, uh, yeah, the gap year to think about your life. Yeah. Yeah, and Omid, so I will probably ask this question like slightly different like to you. How do you see that more and more Gen Z, they're exploring and then trying to take gap years. How do you think these will impact personal growth and the um, social perceptions? Like impact on that? Wow, wow, that's that's a, a big and interesting question. Um, I love it. I think a lot of topics have been covered um, that intersect parts of the gap year concept. But I really love that you use the word exploring because um, it gives the option that considers so many factors and it considers that you might not, it, it might not be your, it, your, the best option for your gap year but it might be also the best option. So everyone has so many different backgrounds. And I, I feel like I, I didn't have a formal gap year, um, but I feel like there are so many different ways to reach the objective of gap year. If, if the objective of gap year is, I want to discover myself and my passions and improve on myself in so many different personal or professional ways, if you don't have the opportunity to have a gap year, I can, I can, I can almost be sure that you can find tiny bits of uh, opportunities every single day, every single week around your hometown, mm -hmm. around your uh, around your region, attend events, meet people, uh, try to volunteer. There are so many ways to, uh, let's say, not necessarily take uh, a gap year if you cannot, because a lot of cultures. I think uh, a cultural point of views are very important as well. Other cultures are are, are they, they don't consider it as um, as an important year, but I think it's, the trend is changing. As we are talking about trends, I think many many young people now they are, they are willing to take gap years because we know that nobody's chasing us. Nobody is chasing us, and there is no delay in a career. There is no delay on anything. It's only about taking about uh, taking more time because I feel like. We are making so many big decisions at the early age. At 14 years old, I chose my high school. At 18 years old, I chose my university. Um, how, how can I define? Uh, we, we shouldn't define like our our a career based on our education uh, at that age. Um, so it's it's more than welcome if we we explore ourselves, we challenge ourselves. There are different places that you can easily take very cheap trains or flies to random places around Europe, in, the, in my case, um, and, and it can just learn from people or, or discover. And I think that that changes the inner part, that changes the exploration of, of, uh, of, uh, of society um, in many, many different cases. So um, it, it's, uh, it's very important, um, but I think gap year is always around you, uh, including here. I think we learn from people and we learn from experiences that we are having. Um, including this, for example, program in, in, in China is not a gap year, but actually it's, it's impactful at the personal growth level, for sure. Okay, yeah. so, so do you guys think there is an age limit for people who wanting to take a gap year? <laughs> I had a friend who took four gap years in a row. <laughs> yeah. In a row, like so, she gap four, four years. Yeah, 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 she took four years off. She took four years off. Um, you know, whatever you need. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's no limitation for gap year. So every time in your life, I think life is, uh, for some person, they think it is too long. I think for some person, it is too short. But uh, every single point in your life, you have to think about yourself. And that is time you, uh, you, can, you can call the gap year or gap time. So I think it is the right time and you can to think about your future planning and your next step or next strategy for your uh, your life and your job or your next education. So that is the one sentence I, I really want to share with us is learn how to learn. Yeah, I think this is a very meaningful sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yes, I think, I yes, please. Yes, I just like wanted to say that I completely agree. And when I talked about like pointing out the importance of any type of mentality when approaching your career, I think it's about the significance and building a sense of identity is only possible through experiences. Yep. 
and when an experience is completely cater to you and you should be able to make your own decisions sometimes and also have a reflective perspective and cultivate self-reflection to actually when you go out there in the world be able to have a meaningful impact through your interactions and also your work so i i think i i, I also agree that a gap year uh, is very important to have that space to cultivate your identity and the experiences that you want to have outside of what can be more like a utilitarian to put in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I think a lot of people nowadays are considering this idea of gap, gap year, but it's just like, oh, okay, I, I, I'm gonna be the bad guy here. So if you wanna take the gap year, how about the money? How do you do the budgeting? Like, do you think that you should plan ahead of time, like for example, from five years now, like I wanted to have a gap year, so I need to prepare for it. Or it's like a spontaneous decision, be like tomorrow I wanna have a gap year. So how to do the financial financial things and then how to do the budgeting, like what's, your, what's you guys' tips and advice on that? Yeah, I think for me, I think uh, one of my friends, uh, she said uh, that, she, she was working for the company before, and she find one time in one point, uh, this is not enough for her to keep going. Yeah, because for some, for the personal, the, the how do you say, the development, he found his limitation to keep going with his work. So uh, just uh, she just want to find the time, uh, but I think the financial part for her is, uh, <laughs> because she has, has the, the, the money to support it, her, her, her life. I think it is uh, not a big issue for her, but I think it is the issue for us to think about uh, if we want a gap year, we have to think about the financial support. So for some persons, you can ask for your parents' support, your friends, uh, but for me, I think you can find a part-time job yeah, to get the financial support. And when you find a place to think about your life, uh, but I think you cannot stop to keep going, but you have to find uh, like the, some job uh, part-time job you have to do mm -hmm. yeah I mean I think it depends on why you're taking the gap year in the first place right like because there are things like working holidays that you can do like working holiday visas you can go to Australia pick strawberries or something um, and then that that can be your gap year and you're still making money you know and supporting yourself throughout that so I think um, it depends. It depends on the purpose of the gap year. If you just want to take a break, if you think you know your work is getting a little bit um, too hectic for you, and you just need a break, right? Then you can go home, stay with your parents, and literally take a break. And then that's fine too. I have friends, you know, at this at this um, point, like even though I've started working, this is like my second job in three years. My second job in three years. And some people think, you know. If I can't stick to one job, does that make me a quitter? Well, sometimes quitting, quitting takes courage, first of all. Of course. And then quitting sometimes is the right decision. You know, if you notice something that's maybe unethical or, you know, doesn't sit well with you going on at work and you don't think this is sustainable, then, you know, by all means, you have given it a chance. You understand the situation. If this is the right de decision, then you quit. Even if you don't have like a fallback, right? If you think this is wrong um, and you're able to quit, I think, you know, follow your guts, really. Follow your instincts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that you guys wanted to add on, Omid or Natalia, about the budget yeah, for like, a gap year? Just personal experience, I guess. But uh, whenever I want to take like a longer break, and sometimes that's possible, sometimes it isn't. But when it is possible, I really plan and I tend to do working extra hard before uh, taking the break. So you're actually more tired when you're starting to get the break, but <laughs> you can have more flexibility because you planned enough, maybe you saved enough money. So I, I guess like it all comes back to strategy and like truly, I'm, really honestly knowing what you want what you need if um if it's something that doesn't feel like work in my case research <laughs> i can do that uh trying to have a lighter um uh, lighter work and then i can have some space to do things that i want so i guess it all comes back to having a plan about on how you want to go on it 
But uh, if it is about um, really having that space, it really is important because at the end of the day, um, before we are professionals, we are humans mm -hmm. and we do have those needs. We need our communities. We need uh, safe spaces yeah. and we do, we do need time to reflect and to actually feel ourselves being alive. So I guess like, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything that you yeah. wanted to say, Omid? Definitely. Uh, I, really love, I really love this conversation. I, I think it doesn't have to be expensive um, to gap year and considering uh, um, um, our participant friends that had four gap years, I think maybe your first gap year would be a cheap one, but maybe afterwards during the, your career you will have the better ones. So maybe it's just temporary gap year uh, experience. But also it can be a, a, a gap month or something like that. And uh, there are so many um, online programs that allows you to volunteer or allows you to travel for very, very cheap ways. Um, obviously, it depends um, on, on what are your aims and, and what kind of trip you're, you're going to do. I think there is options for every, every kind of person, every kind of, of budgets. Um, my personal experience is that sometimes, well, not anymore, but before, uh, a few years ago, we could find flights that were cheaper than a pizza dinner uh, in my city. Um, it was more expensive to go out to dinner uh, instead of taking a one-hour flight. And I think uh, if people would try to plan, plan it ahead or be a bit more um, um, or seeking a bit of more like uh, interesting travels, I think they can find interesting opportunities in that in that side. But definitely, definitely, um, there are so many. If if your objective is to discover your own inner self, I think there are many. Um, uh, smaller ways to, to do your, your gap year or gap month or gap weeks. Of course, of course. And um, thank you so much for the insights and time flies when we are having fun. So I hope you guys enjoy. I really enjoyed this discussion. And then um, I hope we can have more of this. And then thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. Bye-bye. See you. Thank Bye. you for having us. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.